Good day, folks. Sean here from Air Photography. So one question that I do get asked repeatedly, and that is which drone should I buy? As we head into 2023, there's quite a bit of choice on the market. DJI actually has a pretty incredible lineup right now, and if you're new to drones, it can be a little bit overwhelming deciding which one is right for you. Many of these drones can range from a couple hundred dollars up to several thousand. Then when you factor in trying to figure out what features you need, the camera specs, it can be a little bit complicated and overwhelming. Now for me to answer that question of which drone is right for you is not really an easy question to answer because everybody's needs and wants are a little bit different. On top of that, we all have different budgets, what we're able to spend or what we want to spend. So it's not really a cut and dry answer. Now what I do hope to accomplish in this video, however, is go over each drone and talk about what its capabilities and strengths are. And then on top of that, give my recommendation on who I think it is geared for. Now, I'm not going to go over the specs of every drone because as a new pilot, a lot of that probably wouldn't make any sense. We're just going to go over some of the main features, some of the important ones. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better idea of which drone is right for you. Now, when it comes to purchasing a drone, I think there's three important questions you need to ask yourself first. These are things you should consider before deciding what drone is right for you. The first being is the price. We all have a budget of what we're able to spend on a drone. You may not be able to afford one of the higher end drones, or perhaps you just don't want to spend that kind of money if you're not even sure if you're going to enjoy the hobby. The next thing you need to consider are rules and regulations in your country. Every country has different regulations when it comes to weight class, and that as well can be a very important deciding factor. I'll just use Canada here for example. In Canada, if you want to fly one of the larger drones that weigh over 250 grams, you do have to get a pilot certificate and you do have to register it with Transport Canada. Whereas if you go with one of the mini drones that are under 250 grams, you don't need a pilot certificate and you don't have to register it. On top of that, there's very little regulations around it compared to a larger drone. So for many people in Canada, just to save all that hassle, they choose to go with a mini drone. So that is something you will have to do. Do some research on the rules and regulations of the country in which you live. And finally, the third thing is the features and capabilities of each drone. What are you looking to accomplish with your drone? Do you plan on doing a lot of night flying, night photography, or videography? Is flight time more important to you than video quality? Or do you want to fly with a set of goggles like with something like the Avada here? These are all important things you need to ask yourself, and these are things we're going to talk about in this video. So let's go ahead here and we're going to talk about the DJI Mini Drones first. These ones are under 250 grams, so in many countries that is very appealing. And DJI actually sells a few different models. This here is the Mini 3 series. The Mini 3 Pro, which is this one here, was launched back in the early spring. And this one here, just the regular Mini 3, was launched about a month ago. Now, of course, they do have a couple other Mini drones that are still available for purchase, the Mini SE and the Mini 2. But I'm going to keep this video focused on the more recent drones that are available. The Mini series is a great choice, as mentioned, because you don't have to worry about regulations in some countries. They're not as heavily regulated. Of course, that's going to depend on where you live. They're small, they're lightweight, they're compact, so they're easy to travel with. And for the most part, they are affordable for most people. The price of them is quite a bit cheaper than some of the larger drones here on the table. Now, the prices I'm going to give you here are based on the RCN1 controller. I'm going to do that across the board just to keep things fair. Basically, the Mini 3 here comes in at $559, and the Mini 3 Pro here comes in at $759. So basically, there's about a $200 price difference between these two models. Now, I've made a whole video going over the differences between the Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 3. Basically, it's all to do with the features that are included. The way the drone flies is very similar. It all boils down to some of the intelligent flight features and some camera features as well. The Mini 3 Pro at $559 is a pretty good choice. It's very affordable and it flies just as well as some of their larger drones. Now, the Mini series are not as capable in the wind. They actually do handle the wind pretty well. But if you are going to be flying a lot in windy conditions, then one of the DJI larger drones like the Mavic 3 or the Air 2S over here is probably a better choice. But unlike before, when going with a mini drone, you no longer have to sacrifice quality of video or features. In the past, if you needed a mini drone, you didn't have a lot of the intelligent flight features such as tracking, point of interest, master shots, or hyperlapses. But with the Mini 3 Pro here, you get all those features, you get obstacle avoidance, all in a sub 250 gram drone. 
The regular Mini 3 Pro over here, however, does not have those intelligent flight features and it does not have obstacle avoidance. Now, as a beginner pilot, that obstacle avoidance can be very beneficial, especially when you're learning to fly. So again, that's something to keep in mind if you're choosing what drone is right for you, especially if you are a first time drone pilot. Now, I'd probably have to say out of all the drones on this table, probably the Mini 3 or the Mini 3 Pro here is the best choice for most consumers. It's affordable. It does a great job at capturing video. When you move up to something like the Mini 3 Pro here, as mentioned, you get all the intelligent flight features and just the flight characteristics on both drones are just phenomenal. Now, if your primary purpose of purchasing a drone is for capturing content for social media, platforms such as TikTok, Instagram Reels, or even YouTube Shorts, definitely the Mini 3 is a drone you may want to consider. And the reason being is the camera on the Mini 3 can turn vertical. That allows you to capture full resolution vertical video without having to crop it in post, which can save you a lot of time. And it also makes it easier to make sure the content is framed correctly because you can film it in vertical and see what you're filming as it's being filmed. Of course, you can film in your traditional 16x9 if that's what you choose, but it is nice to have the choice. It doesn't matter if you go with the Mini 3 here or the Mini 3 Pro, both are capable of shooting vertical video. In fact, in DJI's current lineup, this is the only drone that is capable of doing that. Now moving along here, another option that is a good choice is the Air 2S. This drone comes in at $999 for the base kit. Although this drone is aging, it's been out for about two years now. When you compare it to other drones on the market, it's still very capable. Now the biggest benefit of going to a drone like this over something like the Mini 3 is the camera. The Mini 3 series comes with a fairly good sensor. It has a 1.7 aperture, which is really good. But with the Air 2S here, you actually get a one inch sensor with it. So your images and videos are gonna be a little bit better. But don't let that sway you. Even though it is a little bit better, it's not really something that is super noticeable for most people. The other benefit of going to a drone like the Air 2S is that it does handle a little bit better in the wind. Just due to the drone having a little bit more heft to it, a little bit more weight, it can cut through the wind a little bit better. It's not gonna be blown around quite as much. So again, if you live in an area where you get a lot of windy days, something like the Air 2S is probably a better choice. You'll be able to fly it quite a bit more. Now, unfortunately, if you do go with the Air 2S when you're comparing it to something like the Mini 3 series, you will take a bit of a cut when it comes to flight time. The Air 2S is rated for 31 minutes of flight time. Now that's rated minutes, you're not gonna get that fully. But when you compare it to something like the Mini 3 Series, the Mini 3 Series do have quite a bit more flight time. There's actually two different batteries that you can get for the Mini 3 Series. The larger battery will put it over that 250 grams, so that is something to keep in mind. But when using that Plus battery with the Mini 3 Pro, you can get 47 minutes of flight time. And with the Mini 3 here, you can get up to 51 minutes of flight time. So that is something to keep in mind if flight time is a top priority for you. Now, touching back on weight, the Air 2S is over 250 grams, so depending on what country you live in, again, that could be a deciding factor. Here in Canada, if you do purchase one, you will have to register it with Transport Canada, and you will need a drone pilot certificate in order to fly it. So to me, that's the main differences of going from something like the Mini Series, the Mini 3 Series here, up to the Air 2S, is basically you're getting a little bit better of a camera, and you'll have a drone that does fly a little bit better in the wind. Now the next drone you may want to consider is DJI's flagship drone and this is the Mavic 3. Now this comes in a few different variations and the price does fluctuate quite a bit. Now this one here is called the Mavic 3, but they recently launched one called the Mavic 3 Classic. Basically it is identical to this one, except it doesn't have that extra tele lens. The Mavic 3 Classic comes in at $1,599. Whereas the regular Mavic 3 comes in at $2,049. So there is a fairly significant price difference there. Now, other than missing that extra tele camera, both the drones are pretty well identical. So if you decide that you do want a Mavic 3, you're just gonna have to decide whether that extra zoom camera is worth the extra price. Myself, I don't really use the zoom camera all that much. I use it once in a while to get a little bit creative with a couple shots. 99% of the time when I'm filming with my Mavic 3, I'm using the Hasselblad camera, the main camera in the system. It has a four-third sensor, variable aperture. Whether you go with the classic or the regular Mavic 3, it's gonna have that same Hasselblad camera. So when you take a look at a drone like this and you compare it to stepping up from the Air 2S, basically you're getting a couple different things. First of all, you're getting more flight time. The Mavic 3 is rated for 46 minutes of flight time. It's not quite as much as the Mini 3 series here, but quite a bit more than the Air 2S. Of course, as mentioned, you're getting that Hasselblad camera, a much bigger sensor, 
It has a variable aperture and just all around a much better camera. If you're going to be filming a lot at night, definitely this is the camera that you want to choose. The Mini 3 actually does a pretty good job because it does have a 1.7 aperture, but the Mavic 3 with its large sensor, in my opinion, just does a nicer job. The Mavic 3 also got a recent firmware upgrade that added some new features, including a new night mode, which does make the job of capturing video at night a little bit easier if you don't have a lot of experience with that. Now, when it comes to intelligent flight features of the Mavic 3, you're not really getting a lot extra. The intelligent flight features are basically the same as the Air 2S or the Mini 3 Pro here. However, there is a new feature that was recently added, and that is Waypoint Missions. As of right now, out of all these drones, this is the only drone that supports Waypoint Missions, where you can make a pre-planned flight, send the drone up, and it will fly that mission autonomously. Now that feature may come to some of their other drones later on. That's really kind of unclear right now. But at this point in time, at the filming of this video, this is the only drone that supports that. Now that feature is not important to everybody, but for some people that might be a really intriguing feature. Again, another upgrade of this drone compared to the Air 2S is that it will perform even better than the Air 2S when it comes to high winds. Although the Air 2S does a great job in high winds, the Mavic 3 here just handles it just that much better. Now another feature of the Mavic 3 compared to any of the drones here on the table, including the Air 2S, the Air 2S does have obstacle avoidance, but basically it has frontward, slight upward, and rear obstacle avoidance, but it doesn't have any obstacle avoidance on the sides. Whereas the Mavic 3 here, due to these fisheye sensors, it can see to the side as well. And that can be important in some scenarios, especially when you are flying autonomous flights, you're flying sideways, that can just give you that extra layer of protection. So in my opinion, you would choose the Mavic 3 if you want the ultimate performance in a drone, you want a drone that has superior video and photo capabilities, then it's really a good choice. So if you're going to be using it for commercial purposes like real estate or photography, although most of these drones are fully capable of that, you're just going to get that much better performance out of the Mavic 3. But as mentioned earlier, that performance is going to come at a very high price tag. So lastly, let's take a look at this drone here. This is the DJI Avada. It was released earlier this summer, and it's quite a bit different than these camera platforms here. This is considered an FPV drone. That means you fly it with goggles. Instead of using the screen built into the controller or a screen on your phone, you're seeing what you're filming through the goggles. It gives you a really nice immersive flight feeling, and it also helps you be a little bit more precise if you're trying to get through small openings. Now, one important thing to keep in mind when flying a drone like this compared to one of the Mavics here is that this doesn't have stabilized footage per se like these camera drones. These have a three axis gimbal that keeps your footage nice and stable and smooth. You'll also notice that the horizon does not stay level, but that's kind of part of the FPV flight. That moving horizon can make the footage look a little bit more dynamic in my opinion, and just kind of helps mimic that sense of flight. Now I think for most people, if you're just starting out a camera drone like the Mini 3 here, or even the Air 2S is probably your better choice. Flying with a FPV drone and goggles, it does require a spotter. Most countries by law require you to have a spotter if you're gonna be wearing goggles so that can be a little bit inconvenient for some people. Now with that said, personally myself, the Avada is my absolute favorite drone out of every drone I've ever flown. This has definitely been the most fun and I really like the footage that I can capture from it. Now unlike these drones here, this drone is very durable. That means it can take a crash. You can crash this into a tree, into the ground, and chances are it's not going to break. These types of drones here, if you clip a tree or fly into a building and it falls to the ground, chances are the drone will be destroyed and will have to be sent in to be repaired. The Avada here is designed to be crashed, so it just allows you to get some more interesting shots, shots that you're not really able to capture on a camera drone. And for me, that's why I really like it. I like getting in really interesting proximity shots, flying through little openings, through forests. And for me, the Avada is the perfect choice for that. A couple other important things to keep in mind with the Avada. It doesn't have the greatest flight time. It's only rated at 18 minutes. And you're definitely not going to get anywhere close to that. Just in my testing when I'm flying it, usually I'm getting anywhere from 10 to 14 minutes. It also weighs more than 249 grams, so you will have to register it depending on which country you live in. Also due to the fact that you do need a set of goggles to fly it. Most likely if you're brand new, you're not going to have a set. So it can get a little bit costly to get up and running with a kit like this whereas these drones here don't require goggles so you don't have that extra expense now lastly before i go here i just want to touch base on controllers when purchasing most of these drones other than the air 2s you can purchase it with either the standard controller this is called the rcn1 or you can get it with their smart style controller this is called the dji rc and as you can see here the main difference is this one here has a built-in screen 
whereas this one you do have to mount your smartphone. It's going to cost you a little bit more to go with the smart style controller, but if I can make one recommendation, definitely this is something worthwhile investing in. It's just so much more convenient. It has actually a really nice screen on it. It's much brighter, usually can stay much brighter than something like an iPhone. iPhones can get very dim on hot days and can be very difficult to see the screen. Whereas this has 700 nits, so it does stay fairly bright, even for continuous flying. It's compatible with the Mavic 3 series, both the Mini 3 and the Mini 3 Pro, and even the Air 2S. However, with the Air 2S, you do have to purchase it separately. There's not a kit available that it comes with. Now, the other nice thing about going with a controller like this is that you don't have to worry about whether your phone is compatible. And usually the compatibility comes down to the DJI Fly app, the app that runs on your phone that powers the drone. If you're running something like an iPhone, you don't have to worry about it. Most iPhones are compatible. But when you get into Android phones, there's so many different manufacturers and models and versions that sometimes you can run into compatibility issues. So by getting a controller that has a built-in screen, you just don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about whether your phone is powerful enough compatible you just power this on and away you go so yeah folks that's basically it for this video just some basic information to hopefully help you choose which drone is right for you as mentioned for most people i would probably recommend the mini 3 or the mini 3 pro here i think they're excellent drones for the price and for most people for a casual hobbyist it's going to be all the drone you need i want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up it's always greatly appreciated don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one